So welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. And here we're going to be uh, continuing from where we left off, which I believe uh, we were just about to go and report the news of the dragon attack um, to the Jarl of um, uh, Whiterun. So, while we're waiting for this to start up, let me uh, repeat something that I, uh, I stressed in a previous um, Let's Play. So, um, making sure that you have enough, um, enough funds in Skyrim is pretty important. And this remains pretty important throughout most of the game. Let's get ourselves equipped and let's get started out with the bow. Let's find out where Whiterun is. So, right now we're down here in Riverwood. And Whiterun, uh, Whiterun is almost due north. You also notice uh, this place marker here called the Dragonstones, that is the result of the um, of the mod that I have installed that lets you trade dragon, uh, dragon souls for perks. Uh, more about that later. But yeah, right now what we're going to do is just head straight up north and talk to the Jarl of, uh, of Whiterun. You can see it from here though, the mountain just over the buildings. And right now we have a bow equipped. Eventually we're going to try and get pretty decent with the bow. Um, initially, uh, yeah, we, we, we're going to spend a lot of time building up uh, combat skills as time goes on. Hey, yeah, can grab some fish. Ah. So there are some fish that are um, ingredients for alchemy, uh, but unfortunately those are just fish that you can eat. Still useful though. Anyhow, as I was saying, you need to really make sure that you have a decent money supply throughout the game because there are all sorts of things that you can do later in the game that are going to cost you quite a lot of money. Some of this will be a result of, uh, of just the normal scaling of leveling that you're going to do. And some of this will just be some very expensive but useful things. So yeah, we're going to keep on collecting uh, alchemy ingredients so that we can level alchemy when we need to. And we're going to keep an eye out for things that we can use to increase our skills. Anyhow, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, we're, don't, we don't want to climb all the way up the mountain. And here's a wolf. Ooh. Oh, good. Did not end up hurting me too much. And I got another pelt out of it, which will give me leather next time that I'm ready to do some crafting. So I will continue north. Um. So yeah, as also as mentioned, your uh, so the skills in the game they come in three categories. Let's take a quick look here. So the skills that are in blue here, they are magic skills, and they'll depend uh, on magicka mostly. The skills in red here are warrior skills, and uh, they kind of relate to health. And the skills in green here. Our, uh, our thief type skills, they do not actually relate to stamina, but, they, uh, but they're very useful in helping you get more money throughout the game and do sneaky stuff. And as I said, both of those are pretty important. So you'll want to pay attention to that. Up there you can see White Run, which is where we're going. So magic throughout the game is a pretty varied, uh, pretty varied uh, field. Most of the um, uh, fields of magic actually will require uh, magicka to cast. Let's kill this giant. Just help with the giant. It is fun. Cool. See if we can actually grab. No, he doesn't drop the normal giant. Um, normal giant props. But that's okay. Here we're getting an invitation to join the companions. to solve problems the coin. Not for me to say. You'll have to talk to Codlack Whitemane up in Gravaskar. The old man's got a good sense for people. He can look in your eyes and tell your worth. If you go to him, good luck. Yeah, so that's um, that's a, a set of side quests that you can do. I'm not planning to do that in this run because 
uh, you can only do either vampire stuff or uh, werewolf stuff. And joining com uh, the companions involves uh, werewolf stuff. Now this guy, he will give you rides to all the major cities in Skyrim. We're going to uh, go back to him later because um, because we're uh, going to make some quick trips uh, to um, other uh, parts of Skyrim very early in order to get some quests and to uh, uh, to get some uh, benefits that are uh, helpful throughout most of the game. But here we're going to keep on heading into town to go talk to the Jarl. So one of the nice things about Skyrim is that once you have visited a place, and uh, and learned it, you can quickly return to it. City's closed with the dragons about. Official business only. Fine, but we'll be keeping an eye on you. Cool. So there, because I I used the persuade skill to let me in rather than just explain, uh, I got uh, some experience for uh, the speech. Or, or I, I'm sorry, I used the persuade option, and that will buff your speech if you do it successfully. So, let's continue into the city. And I like how you can rotate most of the items that you find in screens like this. Or you can zoom in, or zoom out. Kind of fun. So yeah, there are six main schools of magic, five of which you cast spells in. We must have more swords for the Imperial soldiers. I just can't fill an order that size on my own. Why don't you swallow that stubborn pride of yours and ask Yorland Greymane for help? <laughs> I'd sooner bend my knee to so I think, if I remember right, we can talk with her and she has something that needs delivering to the castle. So when she's done talking with this guy, we're going to see if we can ask her for that item for delivery. Got some good pieces. Hmm. I'd say the city's ruled, but you're probably more interested in your vasco. Uh, means we can't get that quest right now. Okay, we'll, we'll take care of it later. We're going to continue up throughout the city to reach the Jarl. So another neat thing about um, Skyrim is that it actually pays attention to the time of day it is, and you will notice it getting brighter and darker, and people will be in a different place in their daily routines depending on when you visit the town. This can sometimes be inconvenient when you visit a town at night because people will be asleep, but if that happens and it bothers you, you can just wait until day, or find a bed and go to sleep. And you do get little benefits from sleeping, which is, is a nice little detail. Yeah, so as I said, there's uh, six um, types of magic. One of them is enchanting, and it doesn't actually have any spells, but you learn enchantments by disenchanting objects that have enchantments. Once you know an enchantment, you can use a filled soul gem to apply it to... Uh, Well, that explains why the guards let you in. Come on then, the Jarl will want to speak to you personally. Okay, let's go talk to the Jarl. Tell him about the dragon stuff. Dragon with your own eyes. So the other five types of magic are alteration, conjuration, destruction, illusion, and restoration. He's going to be talking with that guy for a while, and I will be talking with you. Alteration is kind of a catch-all um, school of magic, and it has a lot of useful spells, but unfortunately it's not super easy to get it up to a really high level, but you, you can cope with that. Um, so with, the, with one of the mods that I have installed here, um, the Realistic Lighting Mod, the game, uh, or uh, Realistic Lighting Mod, the game is a lot darker. And so you're going to make a lot more use of spells that provide light. So the light spells, they're pretty handy. You've done white run service. I won't forget it. Here, take this as a small token of my esteem. Armor from him. Another thing you could do for me. 
suitable for someone of your particular talents, perhaps. Come, let's go find fire. Oh yeah, so we don't actually deal with with the dragon immediately. I'd forgotten about this uh, side quest. We need to go and get a, a quest item first. So we'll go with him and go talk with the court wizard. Yeah, so in the alteration school there's lighting, which is particularly important with this mod that I have installed. There are spells that um, improve your, uh, or give you a temporary buff to your armor. Which is nice, but I don't tend to use it a lot, I just prefer to get decent armor to begin with. Then there are, uh, there are spells that let you detect life and undead, which, uh, which are pretty helpful things to do at times. Oh yes, he must be referring to my research. And there is a spell that will trans transform um, metals from one kind to a nicer kind. I really mean delve into a dangerous And that will be helpful uh, to you in, in crafting stuff. And then finally, straight to the point, eh? Uh, there is a spell that you can use that will let you breathe water for a little bit. Which theoretically would be useful, but the game doesn't actually provide you with enough opportunities uh, to go places where you're really going to need to breathe uh, breathe water, so it's not actually that useful. Yeah, so he's going to want us to go, uh, go to Bleak Falls Barrow and actually... Yeah, so this guy's kind of arrogant. Uh, sure kind of amusing. In the right direction once you get there. Okay. Well, must preserve some professional okay. secrets, must. We? And hmm. we're gonna see if we can pick up any spells that we can use. You'll notice there's, there's a few spells that you probably don't recognize in here. Um, some of them are from mods that I've installed. Let's pick up the muffle spell, which will make us a little bit harder to spot. You'll notice that my speech uh, uh, skill improved. So speech is, um, you'll notice that I actually improved before. Anytime you need to do something involving bargaining or convincing someone, you'll get a bit of a buff. Let's see, what else can we afford? We're down to 213 gold. We have muffle. Let's pick up, um, I think that candlelight is gonna be useful. Is there anything that we can sell this guy? See, we're not going to need rings or necklaces for the foreseeable future. And I think that's it. So we're good. And let's actually use these books to uh, learn these spells. Candlelight, Muffle, and Sparks. We probably won't be using Sparks very much throughout the game. To bleak this is priority you. The Jarl is not in use to fight this dragon. Okay. So, and this is a guy who is pretty useful for teaching you uh, a wide set of spells from, uh, let's see, what mod was that? I think it was the Skyrim Skills and Powers. They're really cool spells, but they're also really expensive, so we won't be able to get anything from him for a while. And actually, we're kind of broke right now. So, we're going to head out and it's night time so we're probably not going to be able to pick any more quests up in this t uh, in this town for now unless we want to wait till morning but let's just head right out um, we're not actually gonna head directly out though to the uh, Yeah, so all the, all the um, characters in Skyrim are very talkative. They all want to talk with you. Sometimes you don't even have to initiate a conversation. They'll just chat when you walk by, which is kind of fun. Looking for my husband, Nazim? Check the Jarl's back. You get used to it. Anyhow, that's the Alteration School. Uh, the next school is Conjuration. Conjuration has basically two kinds of spells that you're going to find useful. Um, the first kind of spell is um, uh, will let you summon some allies, which is very useful in combat because 
if you can uh, if you can get your foes to pay attention to your allies then you can kind of hang back and try and kill them from a distance or sneak up from behind all sorts of fun stuff like that there are also bound weapons uh, which are just summoned weapons that um, that you can uh, can equip and they disappear after a certain amount of time and they are useful because uh, otherwise some of these weapons and tools they'll end up weighing a lot and also bound weapons if you get the right perks they have some really useful enchantments on them that will save you some time or I, I'm sorry that will uh, that otherwise you would need to get on a weapon um, through other means so let's see if we can talk to this guy and I think we have the money to go off to Markarth, which is in the far west of Skyrim, and the reason that we're going to go there early, you noticed earlier we went to a um, went to a, a stone and got a buff to I think uh, all, uh, the learning of thieving skills. We're going to head out and go to a different uh, one of these that will give you a buff to all of your skills. It's not as strong as the buff to thieving skills, but it's you're gonna want skills from basically all all three skill tr uh, all three types of um, type. Uh, you're you're gonna uh, want uh, to be able to learn better in any of the uh, the three main types of skills. So Markarth is the place for you to go get that. So let's pick up an egg because eggs are useful for um, uh, useful for alchemy. Now, uh, you'll notice we didn't actually go inside. That was a very intentional choice because there are some events that happen in that city once you set foot in them, and you probably would prefer to be at a higher level before you get involved with that stuff. Uh, nothing really all that exciting here. So you'll notice up on the top of the screen uh, in our compass, there are indicators of things that are nearby. And that symbol up there, which looks kind of like a stick with um, with a diamond in it, that is the symbol for stones. And this tree gives you juniper berries, which are also useful for alchemy. Let's pick up that stuff. And basically, the, the next time we uh, we come across it, we're going to. Um, We're going to use an alchemy bench and see if we can actually get started on the alchemy uh, skills. Now, I should note that what we're going to try is kind of dangerous, so let's save the game. Just because for these um, for these stones, uh, they're often guarded by critters that uh, can kill you easily, particularly at a low level. And I'm still at level one. Oop. I see something that I saw something. Oop, I do see something. Oh, it's just a wolf, that's good. Cool. Yeah, so occasionally when you kill monsters, you get a cinematic scene. It's kind of cool that I was able to recover some of my arrows. I had to take some damage. Let's see if I can manage to get this stone and run off before something more nasty finds me. Oh, look, there's an egg. Cool, another egg. Did I actually end up getting juniper berries? Yes, I did. Okay, more juniper. Cool. And now I have taken the... Oh, so maybe at, at level 1... So a lot of the dangers in the game actually scale with le what level you are. So here I've gotten the lover stone, which is useful. Ordinarily throughout the game, it's kind of helpful to keep on adventuring. But... Right now I'm so weak that I could easily be killed by almost anything, so I'm going to be a little bit more cautious. Let's head back to Riverwood using the fast travel system. So there are a few other useful uh, conjuration spells. Uh, they'll let you deal with the summons of, uh, of other creatures. But... I don't end up using them that much because there are generally better alternatives to whatever you're uh, going to need to do. So I kind of skip them. 
so now that we are back at Riverwood, let's, yeah, we only have 70 carry weight out of 300 used. That is good because with your limited carrying capacity, you have to be careful with what you bring into a dungeon. New to Riverwood? If you're looking for work, go see if all that the page. So it's getting kind of dark out here. And so what we're actually going to do is learn the candlelight spell and stick it in our right hand and we'll cast it and use it to help light our way as we head to this dungeon. Yeah, so destruction spells are pretty much right what it says on the tin. You, uh, uh, there's a path that leads there. I might not be actually finding it. So it is kind of cool that you can jump up mountains, usually if you can find the path, but it's generally a lot easier to find the proper path. And hopefully I can manage to do that. Jumping up here. And the other downside of trying to jump up a mountain like this is that occasionally you'll head around a corner and end up falling a long ways and dying because of uh, you fell too far. So you have to be careful. Save often if you're going to do this kind of thing. Um, yeah, so with destruction, that's pretty much all spells uh, that are uh, in one of three types, uh, three elemental types: um, fire, ice, and lightning. Each of which has its uh, has its benefit against certain types of monsters. But we're not going to be doing that very much in uh, in this run, so we'll, we'll kind of skip that. Okay, so this is the path that we probably could have found closer to the bottom. We're entering it a little bit later on, and we really should switch back to a weapon because... Did I? I don't want to be killed by any wildlife. It's, it's pretty dicey, the first, uh, first few levels. If you see foes, you are better off trying to sneak, but my sneak skill is not that impressive right now, so we're going to back off. And I just set this guy off. Let's hope that I can kill him before he reaches me. Yes, that's good. Get some stuff from him. Unfortunately, I'm putting an archer now. Ooh, can't just rely on. Okay, good. That takes care of that. I don't think this is actually where we're trying to go. Still, some good use of my skills. So you don't actually get experience specifically for killing monsters, but you get experience for using skills against valid targets, which is just about as good. Let's get some money. I accidentally picked up a wooden bowl. They're not that useful. Let's see what else is up here. There might be more monsters up here. If there are, probably going to need to change weapons. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Run, 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 run. decent armor for my level, and because the uh, levels of monsters scale, he's pretty low level. Let's heal right up, get a little bit of healing experience. But yeah, it helps to be crazy prepared in this game, just like most RPGs. And, ah, there's a treasure chest up here. Cool. That will give me my first magic item that I'll be able to disenchant, that helmet. And then a potion, which is always great for um, a quick healing in battle. So yeah, you're, uh, you'll normally find yourself in the game healing, uh, using healing spells to heal between battles. Uh, but when you're in a battle, 
you're probably going to use potions. Potions are less disruptive to whatever you're doing at the time because you don't need to change what you, uh, what's in each hand. Where am I going? I guess I'm going up there. Oh, shoot. So this might, have actually, might actually be the wrong path for where I want to be. Now it's actually too bright. And let's switch back to the bow. But yeah, healing spells, um, they're more useful in the sense that you're going to uh, going to be able to level them up and they'll get a lot more effective. And your potions are kind of, kind of valuable and they also use a certain amount of weight, so you're not going to have tons and tons. So there's another bandit up there. And it's very helpful that you can see them in your compass because sometimes you might not be able to actually see them directly. Okay. Oh shoot, so there's two guys coming at me. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the sword because I don't really like... Okay, yeah, they're stuck. Where is this guy? Is he maybe behind here? Cool. And I got, I leveled up uh, enough of my skills to gain a level. And we're going to start out by, so whenever you level up, you get to choose whether you want Magicka, Health, or Stamina increased. We're going to start out actually going for a little bit more Health. And let's see, what skill are we going to uh, kind of boost at this point? Um, could improve our archery, or our blocking, we don't really have any other skills that we're really using at the moment, or we could improve our sneaking or our speech. Speech is kind of nice because it gives, gets you more money. I think actually we're going to do that. Get you a little bit more money when, when you're selling stuff. So we're going to hop up to the entrance of the barrow here, which I don't, actually we can't go that way. And let's switch back to the bow. Oop, someone actually is firing at us. Okay. So we're all right. Okay. So we're going to have to climb up and go get him. Once we've discovered this place, we're going to make sure that we're not almost full. Oh, so he's down there somewhere. Where is he? He's down there? Okay. Ah, he's trying to catch me. Oops. Occasionally, when arrows fall, you can scoop them up. Now, now, we noticed that he was using a bow and he dropped it. Is there a nicer bow than what we're using? Our bow does 15 damage. Let's see what a hunting bow does. Wait. Fif oh no, our bow does, does 7 damage. This bow does 8 damage. So, we're gonna switch to using this bow and swap it in under the. Uh, Quick equip menu. Okay, now let's a little bit more healing for some free experience. Oh yes, yeah, so um, the next school of magic that we should think about is illusion. Illusion is really useful once you get it up to a certain level. It um, so incredibly useful is the invisibility spell. Okay, so we found the barrel. We're at 243 out of 300. Uh, have, have this been marked on our map yet? Yes, it has. I think we should be able to make it through this without losing too much good stuff. Um, I guess we can carry 50 more pounds of stuff, which is good enough. Anyhow, invisibility is, is useful in, in the illusion school, but 
you get it reasonably late. Muffle is kind of useful, particularly early in the game when you don't have a lot of sneak uh, skill, and it's a great skill to level up your illusion, um, your illusion uh, proficiency. Now, there are a bunch of other sp uh, school, uh, a bunch of other um, spells that that you can use that will change uh, the behaviors of of creatures around you, and they're all pretty useful. Over here, not being spotted. Cool. Hopefully. And now we're actually going to change to the sword. see what we're doing. Grab some stuff from this bandit. Oh, there's also a bunch of rats around. Skeevers. And they happen to drop some stuff that is useful for alchemy. Unfortunately, the stuff we picked up just put us over the weight limit, so we're going to actually drop some stuff and head back to town to sell stuff before we uh, go on. So we're going to drop both of these Warhammers. This takes us back down to 280. And we'll fast travel back to town, uh, sell stuff, and then fast travel back here. You might find yourself doing this reasonably often in the game. Uh, the fast travel system is really convenient, provided that you've been someplace be uh, before. Anyhow, yeah, the Illusion School is, is really useful. You'll probably end up, once you really uh, realize how useful it is. You'll end up using uh, uh, spells from that school pretty often. And then there's the uh, Restoration School. So yeah, let's fast travel back to... We either go to White Run or we could go to Riverwood. Let's head to White Run. We might actually have to go to Riverwood uh, too if we end up selling more than the amount of golds that the uh, salespeople have in reserve, but we probably won't, not at this level because you don't get very good prices uh, when your speech, uh, speech skill is low and when you don't have the right perks to improve your haggling ability. So, the next school of magic to think about is Restoration. And Restoration is great for healing. You also have ward spells that you can use... Oh, what time is it? 8.29 a.m. We'll wait an hour, which hopefully will bring out the NPC. It does. Got some good pieces out here if you're looking to buy. Whoop. Take a look. We can sell our weapons to her. We have two of these bows. We only need one of them. Uh, can sell all these arrows, the mace, the sword, bows, great sword, steel mace. Yeah, she has 996 gold. We just have 386. So 25 armor. What are we wearing now? Oh, we have something better. Okay, so yeah, we'll sell all the fur armors, the bracelets, shoes, hide armor, and boots. And these are heavy armors, so even if they're better, we're not going to use them. The game does try and hint to you when something is. Don't forget to check inside. Oh yeah. So let's see if I don't claim. To... It's a soap. Listen. Could you take Okay, the that's the quest that we want. Preventus Adamichi. Thanks. So yeah, she'll give us a sword to head up to deliver to her uh, to her dad. Let's see if we can make any more leather and maybe improve any gear that we have. I'm not sure if we actually have the skill to do so yet. So that is a goofy thing about the game. If, if an NPC is using um, one of these workbenches and you want to use it, just keep on tapping at it and you'll kind of shove them out of the way. We can improve our hunting bow. One of these leather strips, which is cool. And 
that's basically all we can do at the moment. We'll head up, deliver the sword, and then we'll fast travel back to the dungeon. I mostly deal with petty thievery and drunken We'll do a little bit of running, pick up some lavender along the way. Yeah, it's kind of cute. You'll you'll hear the kids playing. Uh, as you wander through town, and generally it's situationally appropriate. So this guy is a really irritating preacher. Um, he'll be blabbering on about Talos all throughout the game. Um, obviously, I wouldn't do this in real life, but usually later on in the game, when I have the appropriate sneak skills, I'll end up uh, knocking him off just so that I don't hear him preaching all throughout the game. Uh, okay, we're going to keep wandering up here. I guess I could have actually fast traveled to this because it, it's technically a se separate location than the city. Yeah, so restoration, you can heal yourself, you can heal your friends, you have spells that give you wards that are another armor buff, although I don't tend to use them very much. And you also have some spells that can repel the undead. Later on in the game, uh, in the Dongard, uh, Dongard areas, you get special spells for dealing with the uh, with the undead that directly do damage to them. I serve Jarl from Adrian. Ah, this must be that. Thank you. Please take okay, these gold. Not all that useful. But another neat thing throughout the game is that there's a reputation system, and reputation will uh, will open up new opportunities to, uh, for you. Eventually, you're going to find that, like, when you do enough favors for people in a city, that will uh, that will open up the door to your buying property within the city. The final mage skill is enchanting, and that, uh, as I said, uh, you don't actually get spells for enchanting, at least not in the normal way. When you get items that have interesting enchantments, you disenchant them, which destroys them, but then you've learned that enchantment. Actually, I should probably show you how that works, because uh, I picked up that enchanted item when I was in there. And destroying it here will mean uh, one item less to carry. So learning a whole bunch of enchantments is not strictly necessary. You really only need to learn the enchantments that uh, you're either going to put on items to sell or that you're going to use for yourself later in the game, but it's kind of fun just to build a, a nice set of, uh, of enchantments that you can use. So let's take this Helmet of Destruction, destroy it, and I actually gain several uh, levels of enchantment there in one go. I might as well, uh, might as well do this for the uh, other items I have here get experience for this, that will actually help me level. So cool. Disenchanting those items put me up to level 3. This time I'll put the points into Magicka. I'm going to do a relatively equal development of both of those um, with this character. Can I improve my speech any further? No, I need to have it at 20 already. And all these other skills re require me to uh, have speech at a higher level before I can buy those perks. I could improve sneak, that would be useful. Instead, I am going to improve archery. Because I'm going to be using bows a lot, this character. And more damage is always helpful. So we'll be looking over the uh, uh, the other t um, types of skills in the next uh, Let's Play. And so I guess we're going to warp back to Bleak, Bleak, Fall, uh, Bleak Fall Sparrow, step back inside, and that will be the end of this, uh, this Let's Play. So Bleak Fall Sparrow is here. The fast travel actually doesn't bring you right to the entrance, but it's good enough. It normally drops you off somewhere near uh, where the uh, place marker is for. Now 
Now, if enough time passes uh, between your visits to places, all the monsters will respawn and you might have to fight your way back in. But that normally takes several uh, days at quickest to happen. So, it obviously hasn't happened here. We're just walking right back in. Yeah, I've, I find it a little bit disappointing that sometimes these loading screens don't have anything at all for you to look at. I'm not sure why they did that, but oh well. And here we are back in the dungeon. And it's pretty cool that they've decided to give you a view of the sky here. But you can't actually jump out, but that is fine. And yes, if you play the game without the mod that I'm using that gives you better light, not lighting, then you will probably see, you'll find this to be a less dark experience. Let's grab an axe, which will be useful. Oh, free iron shield and war axe. Okay. Oh, and another chest unlock. Which means free experience for lock picking. And 56 gold. Cool. So that will be all for today. I'll see you in the next uh, Let's Play.